All right, thanks for staying with us. This is Firecracker. So let's uh, shift our focus now and uh, get to talk about the passage of that very bill, the Controversial Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Um, I, 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 it's, it's been a very crazy week, actually, last week when the, 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 that passage happened. At the upper chamber, of course, plenty of drama, tempers fled. At the lower chambers, of course, the Green Chamber, the House of Representatives as well. Uh, the PDP even staged a walkout. Uh, Dr. Philip Igbini Jones, who joins us live from the VGC area of Lagos, legal practitioner, faculty member, Institute for National Transformation, management partner, King's Court Management Consultant. Thank you so much, Doctor, uh, for agreeing to speak with Galaxy TV. Let's even begin with an overview of your assessment of the passage of this bill. Galaxy TV, and I want to commend you guys for the excellent job you all are doing. Um, you know, every time you bring to mind the drama, like you rightly called it, that just ensued in both chambers in the past couple of days, it just gives me a sneak peek of where we are as a nation. Um, mm. It's extremely sad that we have a group of people who are supposed to be representatives of the generality of the interests of Nigerians, and yet uh, in every action and, and everything they say, they demonstrate regularly how insulated, how disconnected they are from the parts on ground. This is, Nigeria is in such a fractious situation right now. I mean, the, the human cry for, for dismemberment of the nation, um, the, the disbelief in the unity and the potentials of the nation is a fever pitch, we are at this end, and then what would have taught you be a generally accepted notion that if there is anything that is copyright by sober reflection, sincerity, and creating the kind of climate that will cause this nation to be able to recover her promise, then you see a people who are representing us and they don't seem to understand. It's all politicking. It's all in a strategic position for future election and not about the well-being, the sincere well-being of a nation. So that to me presents a backdrop against which this uh, subject needs to be discussed. I, I, I believe I heard the view of many Nigerians. Unfortunately, we don't have quite often polls being you know, given on such very uh, important and national issues. If such a poll would have been taken, it would have shown very clearly the absolute disgust of the majority of Nigerians at what played out about the red and the green chambers. Let me start with that. Sense that the passage of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill is more of an APC win and not a victory for Nigeria. Um, is that a view you share as well? Well, absolutely. To, to, uh, to add, Dr. Philip, ju just why is the APC afraid of electronic transmission of results? You know, um, it's uh, it, it actually very mind-boggling, absolutely. Uh, because we would have thought that when you have elected representatives, their interest is not felt about partisan politics, but about the well-being and the preservation of the nation. Of the nation. And if that was to be the case and the motivation, then the voting pattern would have been different. When you see the extent to which they were ready to exchange the physical and the, the, the absolute altercations that took place in the place of trying to pass the bill, it tells you that there are interests that are being protected. You know, electronic transmission of voting records is something that is made as a way to ensure, you know, uh, uh, transparency, sincerity, and, and impose or increase confidence in our electionary process. Why would anybody be against that? Why? The question is why? Why would anybody? I mean, it becomes even the more laughable. Recently at the Benson Dawsa University, that was just on Saturday, the Deputy Senate President, Senator Omo uh, Ovia Gege, was trying to rationalize why the Senate, you know, exposed that particular provision. And his reason was simply that there is just about 43 uh, internet, 40% uh, internet penetration in Nigeria, which is a lie. Which doesn't stand up a reason. Not only does the NCC data, 
which claims it's 89 percent at 2g broadband penetration 89 percent and also you know the national broadband rollout in a plan which was set up by the minister for communication you know the office of the minister for communication also agrees with the ncc but if you leave that alone what about the fact that as we speak or uh, just in the recent past our national identity uh, you know uh, registration sim card registrations have been happening all over the villages of nigeria why would anybody in today's 21st century tell us and want us to believe you know that it is impossible to transmit simple data electronically why would anybody is there any corner of this country that is sincerely not people who are using the internet and even if they are how big or how difficult it is to roll out the technology that will facilitate you know such electronic transmission it definitely is not rocket science to do it's something we can do you know i know everybody knows that in the streets and in the local corners of Nigeria, market women use telephone. All kinds of artisans and traders use telephone. They are able to reach out to people. They send emails. They send people in those chambers. Send monies to their kith and king and all kinds of representatives in those far flung corners of Nigeria using the same mobile or internet penetration you know, uh, connectivity. So we, it is evident that there is no sincerity behind the passage of that. And it, it, it leaves Nigeria further divided. You, you probably have followed the news the moment you know, that particular clause, clause 52 to be precise, uh, uh, section two, or that was thrown out, immediately the, the divide in the nation reared up itself again. Ohana is indigo, condemned it. Um, um, uh, 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 condemned it. ACF, the Arena Consultative Forum, supported it. Now, I'm not here to, to talk about who is supporting, who is not supporting, but to talk about the issues. But the fact that our national legislative body can make themselves tools to present to Nigeria another front of, of, of deepening the divide, of expanding the cleavages, of, of, of constituting, of reminding us of the fault lines that divide us makes it all the more sad. When you consider that these guys are supposed to represent the interests of Nigeria, their eyes seem to be on the next election and not on the next generation. It is very sad, and I can promise you that that decision is going to come back and haunt us as a nation. And, and I do think and hope that hopefully, I don't know how that's going to be, that reasoning will be brought to bear upon them, and one way or other, the matter should be revisited. Because I like, you probably heard, uh, the National Electoral Commission in charge of voter education, Mr. Festus Okoye, who went on sunrise on a program on another television station and talked about the fact that they have the capacity. They have the capacity. They say they have the capacity. NCC say they have, we have enough broadband penetration. So on what side, on whose side is the Senate? Transmission in remote areas. If, if uh, faces can come out to give such an uh, elaboration or clarification if you may uh, so one may wonder what exactly is going to play out if INEC has showed uh, suggested that look we have the capacity to transmit results electronically um, are, are you expecting maybe the, 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 the upper chamber and the lower chamber to come back and say look okay we can go ahead with this uh, before 2023 I, I'm really hoping, actually, this is where I would wish our president would step out and provide the kind of leadership and pressure, uh, because the presidency under President Muhammad Buhari have consistently maintained that one of the legacies the president is hoping to bequeath upon Nigeria when he leaves office is a free, credible electionary process for the nation. He has consistently said that. The presidency has consistently alluded to that. Now, we have before us a national discourse that borders on one vital implement, one vital instrument that will facilitate, you know, the honesty and the transparency of our election process. And we can already see that it's already gone partisan. The consideration has nothing to do. So I do believe that Nigerians need to pile up the pressure. You know, the 
probably have to be all kinds of lobbying, but I would wish the government, especially at the executive level, can provide leadership in this regard by bringing in you know, the moral authority to bear and using all of their lobbying, facilitating you know, agencies and channels to be able to impute it upon members of the Red Chamber, especially that you can't do this to Nigerians. You can't do this to Nigerians. In a free and fair election, nobody should be afraid of the transmission of an election result. Absolutely nobody. Every data, your banking system, every other issue are transmitted electronically. Why would the vote of Nigerians not be transmitted electronically? In the rural areas, there are people who do banking. There is data penetration, 89% at the 2G broadband rate. So you, you discover that there, there's a different consideration. By the way, you know, of course, I've seen a couple of them come out to try and provide explanations. 28 senators, 28 senators were absent. About 28 senators were told were absent during the critical moment when that vote was about to be passed. Very intriguing. The question is why? Was it an attempt not to be counted on the part of infamy? Was it an attempt not to side with their conscience and not wanting to oppose whatsoever? Why would anybody paint to represent their populace, their communities, the absent when it matters that's, the most. That's, that's, These that's are an issues essential question that because uh, I, I hate to break you. Just a moment, Dr. Philip. I hate to break you. That's an essential question. I've been very bothered about that. Why exactly the eight senators were absent? But hold your thoughts. When we come back after the break, we'll get to also ask the question if electoral reforms is even possible in the Nigeria setting. That's a moment. Still with us. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. This is Firecrackers. We are on the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And of course, uh, Dr. Philip Igbini Jesu is standing by. He's been with us for quite some time, a legal practitioner, managing partner, King's Court Management Consulting. He's also a faculty member, Institute for National Transformation. Dr. Philip, thank you so much for uh, standing by. Uh, just before the break, we're asking the question of uh, what exactly happened to the 28 senators were there was it a deliberate attempt to skip this historic essential and controversial passage of the electoral act amendment bill and of course and, and i asked the question as well um do we even think and believe that electoral reforms is a possibility in nigeria You know, I, I hate to answer questions with questions, otherwise I would have loved to ask you why not. The question is why not? For, for the whole essence of um, amendment bills, electoral reforms, is first an acknowledgement of what we all generally accept, and that is the fact that there is always room for improvement as the biggest room around. There's always room for improvement. Even the most advanced democracies of the world are going through constant reforms in order to ensure that every vote counts, in order to ensure that nobody's disenfranchised on whatever ground. So it's a necessity. And Nigerians are known to be very resilient, no doubt, but very intelligent. And we can always muster the courage and all that is required to be able to do what needs to be done. Yes, it is possible. And yes, it should happen. Listen. If it doesn't happen, one of my one of my biggest surprises over our nation is our penchant to act like all is well when we can see the signs that implosions are beginning to build up in every nook and cranny of this great nation. Why do we assume all is well? Why do we assume that we can take more? We can take more. Why are we running away from reality? How far, how long shall we deny what is evident, what is obvious? It is certainly a day that is pouring towards all. A day that we all fear should not happen. When the masses are going to say enough is enough, we can't keep having people who, who are supposed to represent us and the only thing they do is feather their own interest. Because that's what is playing out. Let nobody be deceived. And there is no fool here. Nigerians are not fools. Nigerians are just patient. Nigerians are just resilient. The truth of the matter 
This is about angling for electoral fraud. Period. You know, I like the fact that your station has already issued a disclaimer that whatever I'm saying is mine. And I take responsibility for what I'm saying. There is no way you can convince any sound reasoning person that what is playing out here is not a deliberate attempt to create a platform where manipulation is possible. Otherwise, the question is, why would anybody be against a situation where transparency is about to be promoted? Can one person, of course we all know it's a lie. You just heard a member of the rep, you know, in the video clip that you just played by your child station, you know, remind Nigerians that even just by SMS, the results can be passed. But I'm saying that putting up an internet ability in any nook and corner of Nigeria is not rocket science. It's not rocket science. It's possible to deploy it. You know, before the advent of the global satellite, uh, 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 you know, telecommunications, you know, machinery, which has now become better in our day, we know that we are satellite phones. Satellite phones that people are able to empower to be able to no matter the look, you know, a corner of the world you are in, to be able to send information. Uh, ju so, just a moment, friends, uh, Dr. Philippe, ladies and gentlemen, uh, okay, here is the truth. The truth is, oh, it's a a just a moment. Uh, I believe that the 28 people, 28 is a huge number. It's okay if you say about five, six, seven, they're unavoidably mm -hmm. absent. But 28 to be absent when a critical matter that they know the whole nation is interested in. For some Nigerians and some the other side of the divide, they have made reference to countries such as the US where Donald Trump has insisted that the, the elections were rigged, their systems were hacked. And some, some Nigerians are wondering if a developed country as such as the U.S. can have elections um, uh, being uh, interfered with, the systems being hacked, and all of that. They are expressing fears about such playing out in Nigeria here. I'm a, I'm a close follower of, of the American electioneering process. Uh, by virtue of the work I do in that country and the work I do in, in, my, in, in Nigeria. And I was very eager. America is supposed to have one of the most advanced democracies. And as a, a student of trans national transformation and a lecturer in same, I am always intrigued by matters that border on such processes. So I was very patient to look at all the firewalls. You probably heard that practically all, apart from one that didn't exactly take a position, all the judicial issues that were raised about the concern were all thrown out for lack of evidence. Okay? So, such that even members of the opposition party had to agree, that is the Republican Party, had to agree that President Biden won the election fair and square. All right? Now, of course, the new movement is going on in that country where all kinds of things are being played out. And of course, the opposition and or the party in power is doing everything to be able to counter what they perceive as an attempt to disenfranchise a large section of the population you know, that seem to vote you know, for them. So the, the reality of the matter is that we cannot compare our situation in terms of transparency to the American electionary process. We just cannot. We just cannot. It's a different body. Anybody that's trying to allude to that is just trying to be clever by half. The reality is, let's face our Nigerian situation. Our Nigerian situation is that every election we have had have always been fraught with all kinds of contestation, all kinds of abuses, all kinds of ballot stuffing, all kinds of ballot snatching. We see them on television. We can't deny this fact. Okay, we say let's mitigate the doubt surrounding our elections. And one important element is the transmission. Like you know, has been said, it is not those that vote that count. It is those who count the votes that really count. So we want to ensure that when people vote, their votes are counted. And one little step, but very important step towards the actualization of that reality is the electoral of result. Nigeria is a huge nation. 
It's a huge mission. By the time you start allowing people to carry these things manually, you know, from one station to the local station to the state station to the national station and all of that, many things can happen in between line. Let's eliminate that. One of the things, my argument is not whether it's about PDP or, or, or what do you call it, APC. I'm not interested in which party is about what. But I'm speaking as a Nigerian that is concerned that my dear nation is being pushed to the precipice. The precipice of this member. It is said that there are few nations that have survived two civil wars. Why can't we, as patriots, as true nationalists, Ask the question when members arise, what will best serve the situation that will unite us? That so we we'll have to wind up the conversation because we're absolutely pressed for time, Dr. Philip. But you can hear me loud and clear. Um, though the, 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 the past, just a moment, please, if you may. The question to also ask is Will Mr. President even assent to this bill as it stands right now? You know, I'm, I'm hoping the president will do what he has always done. There have been many bills in the past that have been sent to the president and he refused to give his assent. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that President Buhari will take the moral high ground, will do what is right in accordance to his pledge, that part of the legacy he wants to bequeath to Nigeria after his two terms is free, credible elections. And make no mistakes about it. If this is allowed to pass, then I'm afraid that 2023 is already doomed to the suspicion of fraud. And only heavens can tell what that will be added to the current many challenges as a nation we are already facing. I'm hoping the president will not only refuse assent, but insist that one way or the other, using all the planets, let nobody tell us. We, it is not our preserve. That's what we, we, we know what happens. We know that every institution has the capacity to go to institute some lobbying kind of system that can ensure that things are revisited. This can be revisited, and the right thing done. And the right thing is to permit electronic transmission of results in order for the simple reason, just one reason, just one reason, ensure that people see that elections are free, fair, and transparent. Good place to leave it. We'd like to thank you most kindly for speaking with us uh, tonight. Legal practitioner, managing partner, King's Court Managing Management Consulting. Um, he's also a faculty member, Institute for National Transformation, Dr. Philip Igbini So Thank you so much for agreeing to speak with us tonight. Thank you. The pleasure has been mine. Thank you for having me. All right. So